Welcome back to PG Chain Design. This is PJ. Today, let's talk about how to make this crown ring and how to arrange the pattern correctly for this design. Are you ready? Let's get started. All right, let's starting from a scratch. Uh, every time when you're making a ring, you want to make an exact ring size from my experience because yes, maybe they will shrink a little bit during the printing, but um, you will also polish and that will size up your ring size as well. Um, so that's using the circle, making a diameter for 16 millimeter or whatever size that you would like to make. We didn't want to use uh, the length command and to find out this is 50.265 uh, millimeter. So I'm going to make a copy there and using the line tool. To create a line is exactly the same length. All right, so we're going to do the design right there. Depends on the size that the element that you're going to design for. So let's say I'm going to divide this guy um, into maybe 12 section there. And this is the size of each section that I would like to have. So my design area will be something about this size for about whatever, how tall you want. So that will be my design area. It is just for the reference. Now you have this one, you know, each of them is going to overlapping a little bit so you can make this wider if you want to. But I, I just wanted to make sure that you have a reference there. Now coming into the top view, we're going to do our design. I also like to draw a straight line right in the middle so I know where my design is going to look like. Now you can go ahead to use this uh, you can draw or trace your design over there, but there's a one thing I don't use much, but I find it useful in this uh, application is when you have all the curve that you can draw, there's a one called sketch. You can actually just using your mouse to draw something like this. And um, I should have a disable my point because it keeps snapping into the near. So let me turn this one off on the disable and we want to draw it again. Let's draw something look like this as a S shape and it's coming out like this. And then um, it will automatically make it look nicer a little bit. Then you can turn on a control point and keep adding like say this is going to come back. Um, maybe we have too many points. I want to delete one here and this one gonna go more close to the center and you can do whatever adjustment that you feel is necessary. Okay, now we have this one here. Let's just simply pipe it and see how it goes. So we are going to pipe uh, eyeball whatever the diameter that works for you and I feel like this is not as pretty, right? And it has a little bit kink there. So what we can do is actually use the smooth command to make it a little bit smoother, uh, we're gonna use for going to, I mean, X, Y, Z that we, it actually doesn't apply to the Z, just X and Y. And we can make it something a little bit smoother like this. And let's click OK. Once you click OK, let's pipe it one more time and see if we have a last kink over there. All right, so it's much better, but the head is still a little bit narrow. So I may want to have the head coming out like this. Or maybe I don't need the very last point because it's going to end up a ball there. All right. If I like this one, I'm going to uh, detail into my pipe. Uh, beginning of the pipe, it will be about this size. At the end of the pipe, I actually like it a little bit bigger. So I will have something like that. As you can see, the belly over here is stick it out, which is fine because that's exactly what I'm looking for to uh, when I have uh, everybody is overlapping a little bit. In fact, I need to have this one coming in a little bit. So I'm going to have a pipe. Uh, make sure you record a history. I want to have a pipe about here and the pipe about this size right there and hit enter right now. You can turn on the control point and you can bring this one a bit to the right side so they will be touching there. All right. 
So now you have this one. Um, I also need to have a ball there. So let's go ahead to create a sphere. And I'm going to snap in into this endpoint and to get something like this. All right, I'm going to snap in something like this. All right, double check if they are in the same height, if that is correct. And if that is what you're looking for, just go ahead to bowling, maybe bringing a little bit inside like this. And we're just going to go ahead to select all of this and we're going to bowl in union together. All right, it would say, well, break the history. That's OK. We are not going to change anything. Now, if you take a look on the render view, you're going to see there's a really sharp line there. It doesn't look good. So I'm going to use the commands for further edges. And let's do something really small, like a 0.15 and see how it goes. This edge is there and this edge is there. All right, it looked pretty smooth there. And so we're going to keep it there. So let's go back to the ghost view. Now we are going to have this one and I'm going to mirror to the other side like this. So you have the upside down heart shape there. Um, and then if that is a, a it look nice and we can flow to to the ring. You may also have a question say let's say I'm going to have a stone there. So I already have a stone sitting in the prawn set and it's going to put it there. Should I flow the seat or should I work in the seat on the ring? My answer is working the seat on the ring. You don't need to float it. It will deform it in your stone a little bit which is not going to be pretty. So we are going to move in the stone that I have, put it there for us to use. If you want to know how to make this stone setting, I actually have a whole playlist for the stone setting. And if you want to do, do uh, know more about different type of stone setting and fancy cut, um, how to hold in the stone, certain prong size, you can check out uh, my online course for stone setting. Okay, come back here. We don't want this just like that. We actually want to have a bottom to be thicker, right? So what I like to do is coming over to the top view, I'm going to draw a box, something like this and go a little bit deeper there. And then we're going to use the bowling union, this guy out of this guy. All right. So now we have this bottom is completely flat. That's using the gumball and holding the control shift and click on this surface and we want to extrude it longer. All right. How long do you need it to? It really depends on how thick that you want your ring to be. I think this is a bit too long. So I'm going to bring back for something look like one and a half millimeter. OK, so something like this should work. Now we need to have this one flow to here. You could have just moving this one sitting there and doing the polar array that will work too. But I like the button to be rounded and follow the ring shank. So we are going to use the command flow. And we want to flow this guy. Oh, before we move it, I actually need to show you some little trick there. Now, if you click on this one and you want to come into the curve tool, you want to know the adjust curve seam. It's going to show the seam is right there. All right. So I'm going to move the seam to the bottom. doesn't matter where it faces, it, and that's the bottom. That also means like the one that I have, this should be right in the middle of this curve. So my design was sitting on the top. All right. So what we want to do is align vertical and we want to align this line to this line and hit enter. And then so it will sit in there. Let me just did it this curve here so it's not bothering you. So this one is sitting right in the middle of this curve. All right. We're going to use the um, flow command and we're going to pick up this object and hit right here and also hit the one on the ring. See that ring is much lower than what I want is because the, uh, the object is actually lower uh, for my reference point. So that I forgot to change it. We're going to pick up the object at the right view and that's aligned to the bottom and just type it zero. So it's sitting above the construction plane. Let's flow it one more time. We're going to float this guy snapping to the base curve. 
and snapping to the target curve. All right, so now it is sitting there. Remember how many sections that we have? One, two, three, four, five, six. So we got 12 sections there. That also mean we're going to, maybe this need to be a little bit bigger. Um, and then it's going to sit it right there. And going to have it move it up like this. All right, just need to make sure it's not stick it inside of a ring chain like this. We want to go something like this. All right. If everything look all right to you, I actually will select everything and we are going to come in here with a, a polar array, type it zero, and we do want to have 12 of them and for 360 degree and we will get something like this. Now to, to all this joint right there, it's a little bit too thin. So that's also creating a base. And before we do that, that's moving this circle out a little bit. I'm going to use the conic corner on the rectangle and snapping right there, making a square roughly about this size. And then uh, with the really round corner, and we are going to use the sweep command. So let's go ahead to sweep one rail cross section and we'll get something like this. Now we just need to put this one back to here and make sure it's touching so you will have a good rendering there. All right, so this is the rendering and that will be our crown ring. If you like the way I do the model, please join the membership. I have over 100 additional video in the membership program that you can watch 24 seven to learn more about Rhino 3D model. Thank you for watching and I will see you next.